In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating four different cards for you, and this is my free online card class available to everyone. So there's also a PDF tutorial, and you can find the link for that in the description listed below. If you are one of my customers and you placed an order with me this month, January of 2022, I will be sending you a complimentary card kit in the mail with some pre-cut card stock and some embellishments to uh, recreate these cards at home. Now, if you don't have the stamps or other product that I use on today's cards don't worry about that use what you already have if you do wish to make a Stampin' Up! purchase or if you're in Canada and you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator feel free to reach out to me I'd be happy to help you and again my contact information is listed in the description below to all of you watching I hope you find lots of inspiration in today's demonstration and that you have fun making cards like these at home as well so let's start stamping so as we are currently promoting celebration right now with Stampin' Up! I know a lot of you have been getting our free celebration products. Now, if you don't have these or you don't have the Stampin' Up! supplies I'm using, I encourage you to use what you have at home and just have fun stamping and creating. But this is what I'm gonna be focusing on today, not just the stamp set, but celebration products. They're gonna be used in this class. So let's start by using this adorable stamp set. This is called Driving By. I love it. This reminds me of an old Volkswagen van we had when I was growing up as a kid. And um, yeah, I was pretty excited to see this. This is gonna be good for scrapbooking as well. Uh, some of my old photos when we went down to Disneyland and Virginia City and all these fun trips that we had as kids where we went in this um, Volkswagen van. So that's what I'm using on this first card. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you purchased with me this month, then you're going to be receiving a complimentary card kit. So everything is going to come pre-cut um, like this in your tucked inside your envelopes. Um, but everybody will get the PDF tutorial. And again, that's listed in the link below. And if you placed um, a minimum $40 with me this month, you're also gonna get a package of embellishments. And the embellishments for this month are our iridescent rhinestones because I am loving these. So I wanna pass on the fun and get these in the hands of, um, of everyone who's ordered with me this month because they are pretty fan freaking tastic. All right, what am I doing? I'm talking too much. Let's start stamping my brand new Memento ink pad. My last ink pad um, was so old, I couldn't even tell you how many years I'd had my black Memento ink pad and it was starting to get like fuzzy. I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it's like the fibers were coming apart and then I was getting like bits on my stamps and they weren't stamping. So uh, it was time, that's how I knew it was time to put it in the bin and get a new ink pad. So this is my new ink pad. And is there anything more exciting than a new ink pad? Okay, maybe there is, but I was still pretty darn excited. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just making a background and going in between there here's my background this card would be really adorable on crumb cake as well but we are just doing Sahara sand now I am going to be using my uh, pumpkin pie light and dark stamp and blends of course you can use uh, whatever coloring tools you have at home but that's what I'm doing today I'm gonna start with my light pumpkin pie and I am just going to quickly color these you want to be careful with stamp and blends if you're new to them because they can bleed outside the lines see how it's gone on that tire a little bit I'll zoom in for you a tad um, so yeah just keep that in mind it's always better to go see how I'm kind of going underneath that line instead of right on top of it because it will bleed a bit just saying I'm gonna do that too I'm gonna do that too so I'm gonna quickly color this Now I'm going to take my fine tip of my dark pumpkin pie and I'm just going to go over the wheels 
and maybe the little bumpers as well. If you want to, you can add some highlights. And if you want to add some highlights, you probably think I'm just scribbling. Um, but you know, okay, I am just scribbling. But I just want to say some people get so caught up in saying, oh, I don't know where to put my shadows. I don't know where to put this. I'm not an artist. It takes too long. Uh, you know what? I say there's no rules. I say do what makes your heart happy. And nobody is here on this earth to judge anybody else. And that includes how you choose to color and how you choose to make your cards, right? Do what makes you happy. So you see, I just kind of scribbled that. But then what you can do is take your light pumpkin pie and just go back on top and just work it all in. And I didn't have to be, you know, uber precise. And this is part of the beauty of using our Stampin' Blends is how they do blend in effortlessly. And when you're using the right tools, they are what make you look like an artist. That's what I say too, because I'm not an artist. I am not an artist. I could not draw a stick person if my life depended on it. That's why I use stamps. Okay, so now you can leave it like that or you can take your color lifter and you can just work it in that way as well. Right? So you can put as much time and effort as you choose when you're coloring a whole bunch of um, images like this. Good enough. Now I'm going to grab my light blue. This is my light pool party. I'm going to use this for my glass windows. Oh look, I forgot that little guy up in the corner. There's also going to be a label with the sentiment going on this and some ribbon. So some of this is going to get hidden behind that. Okay. Let's grab my orange again and quickly do this. Oops. Fine tip. I want to use my fine tip. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm using my light and my dark smoky slate for the tires. I'm just going to go around. This is the light smoky slate. Then I'm going to take my dark smoky slate and do the centers. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, I'm going to take my... See. I'm going to take my white watercolor pencil crayon and you could leave these as they are. They look pretty darn cute or you could do what I'm going to do and add some white and I am pushing kind of hard here and look it just brightens it up doesn't it? And I like using the watercolor pencils because I'm not losing the detail of my stamped image as I go over top it with this pencil crayon. Watercolor pencil, I should say. Somebody asked me once, why do you call it a watercolor pencil crayon if you're not using water? Um, you have the option of using water with these, but you don't have to. You can use them like a regular pencil crayon, like I am, or you can add water and make the color flow like a watercolor medium. Um, so that's why they're called watercolor pencils because you have that option. So I'm just going around the tires and then my coloring is done. All right, next, next I wanna add some twine. So I'm gonna take my tear and tape Okay, so I'm just going to take some twine. I'm going to hold an end here and wrap it around twice. Kind of. Cut 
that off. Okay, get my card base. I'm gonna put this on so it's tone on tone. So it's gonna hold it down. Then I'm gonna grab a glue dot and I'm gonna put my glue dot right there. Oops, it's so cold, my glue dots don't wanna stick. It is a, another cold, cold day here in Nova Scotia today. Um, some places were like minus 31, and that wasn't far from where I live. We didn't get that cold, but it sure felt cold. All right, I'm just tying a knot. It's all right that that twisted up there. I can just work that down. And I didn't really give myself much left for a bow so it's gonna be an itty bitty bow here so tiny i'm gonna need my scissors to pull that up there we go that works that's good okay so now it's time to um add my sentiment and for this i'm using my double oval punch which i've already got done Guys, how do I always lose everything? Here we go. Here we go. So I cut out the scalloped oval with black. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick that onto my card. I'm gonna tuck this right under here like so. See what I mean? It's kind of covering some of our Volkswagen fans. Okay, and then this is from our new marble designer series paper that you can also earn for free during celebration. Look at that. Marvelous it's called and it's pretty darn fantastic. I'm loving it. So, adding a little bit of that. I kind of thought this kind of reminds me of like um, chrome or something just with that pattern. Kind of, Kind of cool. Now, oh, another reason why I like my glue, so I can get things straight. So now, um, those of you who get the kits have a piece of Sahara sand trim. This is for the sentiment. My original card, which I'll show you in a minute, I used all thanks. But for this one, I think I'm going to put driving by just to say hi, just so we have a bit of a variety. And I'm going to use my pumpkin pie ink pad because I want to pull all the colors in that I've used on my card. Okay. And I'm going to flag the edges. So I'm going in the center and then from side to the center, side to the center. And do the same thing on this side. Here we go. Let's see how that looks on there. It looks pretty cute. All right, let's grab, actually I got too much on this side. Let's trim that down just a smidgen more. There, okay. Dimensionals, and I'm just gonna put that right in the center of this. And grab some of my Fancy, fancy little iridescent rhinestones. And one of the reasons why, one of the many reasons why I love these rhinestones is they kind of pick up the colors um, no matter what color you're using, right? Like this looks like it's picking up the orange. If you're using pink, it looks like you're picking up the pink, right? Like it's, I don't know, I just think they're pretty, pretty darn cool. So there's my card. The only thing I have left is to add um, my paper for the inside. So I'm just using my computer paper, cut four by five and a quarter, and then I will stamp my sentiment later. So there's the first one. Let me sh let me show you the original card. So here's my original one, done the same way, but I cut the sentiment off. Thanks like to size so you can see right it's a lot 
smaller um, but otherwise it's done exactly the same and I think it's adorable and then on the inside I did stamp a little van and then I'll add my little my little sentiment So there is card number one. Isn't that sweet? Now imagine doing that same layout using this or using all three. Like, oh my gosh, you could have a lot of fun with this. I can see this like a little red um, Volkswagen bug. Yeah, lots of fun with that. Okay, so let's move on to card number two. So for card number two, I'm using Catching Butterflies. And I didn't mention earlier, but if you're not aware, how our celebration promotion works is for every $60 you spend here in Canada, you can choose um, certain celebration products for, for free. And these are a couple of your, your options when you spend a qualifying order of $60. Um, so, yeah pretty darn fun. The links of course are in the description below if you're interested. This is the cute stamp set I'm using next. So I'm going to grab my little girl and we'll just grab this block and then here's everything all ready to go. So first our card base is Knight of Navy. I've cut it to measure four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half. Then we have designer series paper that's new with celebration daffodil afternoon and um, and what else I have a die cut from our diorama dies and some of our new ribbon this ribbon here comes as a combo with this ribbon so this is our cotton ribbon combo pack. So you get this, you know, you get a bolt of ribbon with this and that, and then our denim ribbon. And then I have a couple circles cut with our layering circle dies, basic white, nine of navy. Okay. And we also need our detailed trio punch because this has been lonely and it's been telling me it, it's been needing some love. So... I said, okay, time to pull you off the shelf and give you some love. So I am rounding the top two corners. So I'm using this here. So you get three different punches I'm using that one. So I'm just lining it up like so, so that the side and the top is lined up against those two grooves. Okay. And then I'm just going to push and it's perfect. I'm going to do the same thing with my designer series paper. And I've already done it with my computer paper. Now I did two at a time because computer paper is pretty thin and flimsy. Doesn't work well unless you have at least two layers when you're using a punch. So I can save this for another card. All right. So I'm going to put both of those aside. I'm going to bring this in with my tear and tape. And I'm only going to put oh, about that much on each side and use glue for the rest. This is to hold down the, the uh, tails of my ribbon. Lift that up. And that up. Okay. Put my ribbon on. I'm going to put it down about here. I think that's straight. I'm going to take my glue. Actually, I don't need all that excess. I'm going to trim that up. And then this little strip here, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to fold it in half and take my scissors and I'm just going to cut at a diagonal. And this is going to get glued across like so. So if you need to, like if it comes past the car like that and you want to trim it down some more, go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do, actually before I do that, I'm going to take a glue dot and put it underneath this ribbon just to hold this down a little bit. Okay. I'm just going to put a strip of glue right across the middle. 
and then put this on top. I am going to trim that just a smidgen. And if you don't have, that's not very on a diagonal, is it? If you don't have um, contrasting ribbon, you can use a tiny strip of cardstock. Now, I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to, let's just stamp the sentiment, shall we? Uh, collecting sweet thoughts of you. I'm going to stamp this in my black. All right. Let's stamp this on here. Perfect. I'm going to set that aside for a minute. Grab my little girl. And here's my diorama die. And I'm going to stamp her so that her little feet are going in this direction because this is wider at the top, which gives me more room for the net and butterflies. So let's stamp her with memento as well. And before I put her away, I'm going to pull in some more of the, that marvelous paper. And I'm going to ink her up, but I'm just going to stamp on the corner here. I want to get her dress. Oh, I went off a little bit. Oops. Let's do it this way here. There we go. Because we're going to do some paper piecing. So I'm going to cut that out in a second. We have the little grass stamp. Let me stamp that on here too. So sweet. I'm gonna stamp that there. And another bit right there. Um, we'll put a butterfly right there. And another one here. Um, do I want a third one? That is the question. Why not? You can never have too many butterflies, right? Do you see how I just got that little bit of ink splotch where I didn't want it? Right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways, let's color. I'm going to grab, grab my ivories. Let's bring that girl back because there's something fun we're going to do with her. So I need to color her little face in again. Do her little cheeks again. So the one I just colored is going to be underneath this one. So you're not really going to see what I just did, but that's, that's okay. This is the one you're going to see. Okay. So now I'm going to bring in my Daffodil Delight. And I'm just going to color on her hair. You could use your Stampin' Blend marker as well. I just didn't think about it and just ended up grabbing this one. Okay, now I'm taking my Bumblebee marker. And even though this one's going to go underneath the one that I'm going to cut, I still want to have some of this showing through and you'll see what I mean when I put this together okay and then on here and this just is fun because it adds it adds a variety of color we will come back to this in a bit I'm gonna take my um, light smoky slate and I'm just going to go over this like so I didn't want to color the whole thing in but I did want some some color on that and let's see I want some petal pink so I'm actually going to take my petal pink marker because that's the color of this ribbon and I'm just going to color in my butterflies take my bumblebee again and I'm just gonna add a bit of yellow and I'm gonna grab my old olive 
ink pad. This is my favorite way to add grass or like the look of grass. I like to use my um, water painter and my ink pads. You can also use a blender pan and an ink pad. Come on water, come on water. All right, there we go, I can feel water coming out. I'm squeezing until that water comes out. Okay, so I'm gonna pick some up. This is our old style ink pad, so it's on the lid. And what I'm gonna do, now this is black memento ink. It's gonna bleed a bit. Whereas if I use stays on, it wouldn't bleed. So I'm starting just below the line and then I'll pull it up because it will pull some of that black ink. Okay, there. Time to cut out my dress. I love paper piecing. It's like playing with paper dolls. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this girl. So cute. And look, you get the different colors of that designer series paper in there. Really, really sweet. Now I want to glue this onto my card. So now I'm just gluing my sentiment onto my Knight of Navy. And I'm going to put this right here. So it's actually kind of covering up her feet, which I didn't want. So I'm going to change plans here a little bit. And I'm going to put it off to the side. Because I don't want to hide her little feet. They're too cute. Uh, we're going to add some of these rhinestones. So that ink splotch, boom, gone. What ink splotch? I didn't see no ink splotch. Did you guys see? I did not see any ink splotch where there wasn't supposed to be ink splotches. There. Now, this piece. There's a little different way to how I cut around this piece. So I'm going to show you my little idea for this and it worked out so well on the original card. So I'm cutting around her face and her little ears as per normal. But when I get to her hair, I start doing something different. So this little line, I'm gonna snip right around that. And then I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna cut this little wisp out like so. I'm going to come right down here and cut. Now, I'm going to cut this out just so you can see. See this little piece here? I'm going to cut that right off. Okay, oops. And then go around this little wisp. And then I'm gonna go in that little circle bit. And then I'm gonna go cut around this little bit. Basically, I omitted a piece of hair. And you'll see the cool effect that that makes when I pop this little thing, this adorable little face onto the front of my card. Okay, look how cute this is when I put this on. I'm gonna put it on, I'm not gonna line it up exactly. I'm gonna stagger it down just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. So you can get that really neat 3D look. And also the hair that I cut off is coming up behind. So isn't that, cool and so so simple right so simple so let's go ahead and put this on the inside of my card and then I will show you the original card that I made so it's card number one so here is the original and you'll see I did it a little bit differently so depending on where you stamp your little dress on your designer series paper you're gonna get a whole different looking dress right or if you even use the reverse side, 
so pretty and um, you can see I did my butterflies in different colors and I also stamped a third butterfly and popped it up I also stamped celebrate every beautiful thing and I put my rhinestones on the sentiment versus putting them up on the main image so isn't that sweet and I just love how that looks with that hair coming behind this cut piece Card number three features the Friendly Hello Celebration stamp set and this also comes with a package of 12 by 12 designer series paper and that's with a qualifying sale of $120 before tax and shipping you get the stamp set and all that 12 by 12 paper. Um, this is such a beautiful stamp set and I really love the card I'm about to show you. It is so simple. Now. I'm kind of on a round the corners kick, so I'm going to round the corners on the bottom of my card versus the top like I did on the last one, and this is going to be landscape mode, okay, and it's kind of a one layer card, but there's some, there's some bits and pieces to it that make it a little bit more, um, have a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to pull out my flowers. I hope you guys are having fun and getting lots of ideas at home watching this. Like I said, even if you don't have these stamp sets, look at the stamps you do have and take these ideas and just run with them. If you don't have these stamp sets and you want them, contact your demonstrator or myself if you're in Canada. I'm always happy to help you. All right. I am going to stamp this across. So I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to stamp off but I'm going to turn this around and do it that way and then put one that way okay so coming off my paper then you're going to need a scrap piece of white which I happen to have right here Now it's time to color and I decided to pull in my chalks, my Stampin' Pastels. Okie doke. Fancy pantsy coloring tools, I'm using Q-tips. Now this is kind of a cool concept you may not have considered before, but I'm going to color my flowers different colors like for the each petal is going to be a different color which is you know not something you usually think about doing right but wait till you see how pretty they are when they're done so I'm going into the darker yellow which I think is bumblebee maybe crushed curry not sure okay so I did three on that one you can do one you could do two you could do three whatever you want We'll just do one on this one. Can always come back and add color as well. Do these ones as, as well. Okay, and I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna go into my lighter blue. You could also use a blender pen with your chalks but I I like using the q-tip because you get a softer look and then if you want you can go back in with a blender pen to highlight and shade and darken if you want to gonna grab another one because I want to make sure each tip is for a different color and I still want to add green and I still want to add purple okay and now I'm gonna add purple as the last color 
<laughs> so I want to add some purple on here. So I'm going to go right on top. You can do that. I'm going to go right on top of this one too. Lastly, I'm going to go in with the dark green for the centers of each flower. One thing that I've forgotten that you can also do is you can also stamp on designer series paper to get a pattern behind these images. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly do that. This is a scrap piece left over from the designer series paper that's part of this bundle. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp two, which you can leave it like that. And you, like I said, you get that pretty pattern coming through or you can color on top of it, which I'm going to do real fast here. bring all these back in like look how pretty those are like would you ever have thought of making petals different colors like this like who would have tunk it all right I'm gonna take my clear wink of Stella and I'm gonna go over all the yellows first starting with my lighter colors because this will change the colors that you're working with as you can see Picking up that black memento ink too, that's where you're getting some of the darker color. So it's probably a good idea after you clean your brush to, um, to work within the color as you go up to the, uh, the outline image. Then you're not kind of like muddying up your, um, your chalk. All right, now, I want to cut out these flowers. So I'm going to start with my patterned paper. So you can see I actually cut um, some of the images apart. I'm going to show you how I did that. I literally just followed around the full flower image. then I get my two flowers and you can even use this piece on the card too. I am going to take my Stampin' Dimensionals and figure out where I want to place these. I'm going to start with, now don't forget, two of these have the patterned paper. I do want that patterned paper on here. So I'm going to stick one down here. So that's the one that's kind of missing a bit. And then I'm going to take um, one of my solid flowers on my basic white cardstock and I'm going to put that on here and see, I'm just going to turn that around, figure out how I want it here. I'm going to put it like that. Okay. And let's grab this one. So this is like the partially cut one. And I'm going to put that one down here. And then the one with the patterned paper, I'm going to position on top of that. I'm doing this one a little bit different than my original card. And then the full one, I'm going to put, where am I going to put this one? I will put it... Here, and I'm turning it around so you can see whoops you can see that this goes like that but it's fun when you cut them because then you can position them different ways I think I'm just gonna do that okay and next I want to stamp some splatters so I'm going to use crumb cake for that so it's this image right here that I'm using I'm just gonna tap it Get a little bit of ink there, so I'm going to tap some down there, <laughs> hide that ink. And you know what, it might be fun to put this little bit on here and then just cut off the excess. So let's try that and see how it looks. 
my cat Forrest is trying to get into the video here. Stay there, buddy. Make sure I have that dimensional all the way on the paper. And let's just trim that off. See, that looks pretty cool. And because I have a little bit of a splatter down there, I'm going to just add a little touch up here so I kind of have them both on the edge, not just all in the center. And now I'm going to add my sentiment. And the sentiment I'm going to use is hope you have the best birthday. Okay, I'm going to stamp that first with black. Actually, I'm going to stamp it on here first because of that new ink pad. There we go. Tap lightly. So I'm going to stamp that right in here like that and then I'm gonna take a scrap piece of designer series paper this is part of that same designer series paper pack that comes with this friendly hello um, bundle so I'm just gonna stamp this directly on here oops that didn't stamp very well did it hmm I can tell you right now, when I'm using photopolymer stamps, it does work better to have the piercing mat underneath, just because it doesn't have that extra layer of foam like our cling stamps have. You watch, this is gonna work great. See, now I can't say for certain that's why those weren't stamping well, because it stamped well on this, right? But it does indeed make a difference when you're using the piercing mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. I just want the best birthday and Forrest is trying to get to my new bolt of ribbon so let's get that out of the way don't worry if your lines aren't perfectly straight and I have just enough on this end to flag it Do the same thing here. Okay. And now I'm going to take my dimensionals and I'm just going to cut a little sliver off the edge and put that behind my sentiment and pop it up on my card. Okay rhinestones so some of these centers like the bigger flower have the bigger centers and then these ones have the smaller ones so i'm going to use the bigger gems on the larger flowers and the medium size on the smaller ones you don't have to put gems on all the flowers you can just put gems on the uh the popped up raised ones but I know where you can get more <laughs> and I love them so much and I think they look absolutely stunning on this card see how pretty <gasps> I forgot the leaves we need to add leaves I should mention too it is after 4 p.m. so I've gone ahead and poured myself some red alipachala and um, I am thoroughly enjoy my time with you stamping and making these cards all right more designer series paper from the same packet as you can see I keep all my scraps and I'm gonna bring my chalks back in and my handy dandy q-tip and I'm gonna go in that light granny apple green and color this in I'm not gonna use this because it's missing the tip Yes, I will use that. I'm gonna try it, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but I do like uh, odd numbers and there's only four leaves there and I'm gonna want a fifth. Um, so you know what, maybe I'll stamp the fifth one. Now I'm gonna go into the darker green and I'm just gonna pull it up in the center of those leaves and then I'm gonna cut them out. Okay, wipe that off. I should move the camera a little bit so you can see 
my companion. Let me zoom out. Can you see? Here's Forrest watching me craft. Little tricky. All right, let's zoom back in. Okay, I'm gonna cut these out. Let's stamp one on too. I'm gonna use the outline image. This is two steps, right? So you can stamp this with the darker green and stamp on top with the lighter green. Love two step, but I'm just gonna use the outline which is this one. And this is uh, Granny Apple. So I'm gonna use my Granny Apple green. I think it's Granny Apple, pretty sure. Okay, this is just a tiny leaf, so, uh, and I wanna do it where there's some white. So I'm gonna stamp it right there. And use my chalk to color it in. Let me show you the original one. The original one does not have as many flowers. But look how pretty. Just the one line, soft, just three leaves. They all have their rhinestones. Oh, and I added a linen thread. I need to do that for this one. Pretty. See, it's subtle, but it's there, and it really looks really pretty. I love these cards. Isn't that a nice way to use those flower images? Or any flower image that you have. You can make it even without the raised um, flowers if you want. Just keep it in one layer. So nice. All right, time for the last card, but first, more wine. Okay, look at this is the card that we're making. This is a really cool fun fold all right i am going to be using our new rainbows of happiness i think it's called um also free with the qualifying order during celebration uh so let me pick let me try to pick a pattern hmm i'm gonna use this one so those of you getting kids you're gonna have a different pattern I'm folding corner to corner. This to that, okay? Corner to corner. Then I'm gonna open it corner to corner. Never mind, Forrest. It's just paper, nothing exciting. Well, not for a cat, anyways. Unless you're a Leo like me, this cat gets excited over paper. All right. So now, okay, we've got our we've got our two fold lines, right? Now what you want to do is fold each corner into the center part, into that little center, right? Give it a good crease. Give it a good crease. Once you make maybe one or two of these, you will have this card fold memorized. So then what you're going to do is open it up. And now you're going to fold those same corners into this bottom fold, that center right there. So this is going to go center of this bottom line that you just made. So this is going to go up to that last crease line. Now that you've done that, 
you're going to fold these flaps down just come sa just like that and this one look i overlapped it a bit hang on bear with me that was not quite straight right did you see this paper was overlapping a bit and I don't want that okay so then up and over okay next you're going to take this corner and you're gonna go towards the center corner but not all the way you want to leave a little tiny gap so hang on and I will show you one moment see can you see guys I'm leaving just like an itty bitty gap on both sides and you're gonna do that all the way around bone folder is a very handy dandy tool to have when you're doing this go up towards the center leave a little bit of gap and give it a good crease okay see just see what I mean a little bit of a crease and like this is more narrow than this side seriously perfection is overrated not gonna worry about it now the last step is you're gonna fold these flaps down you're gonna just kind of fold them down leaving maybe what is that a quarter of an inch because you want to see this tab picking up or poking out on the um like from this side right so if you don't fold it down far enough you're only going to get a teeny bit of that tip so you do want to make sure when you fold it over that it's going to show through when you flip it on this side okay so again uh, i have to do it this way fold it over and like i say i'm leaving probably about a quarter of an inch like here there that's it that's it that's all and that needs to go a bit more that needs to go a little bit more see it's a bit forgiving you can play with it and how I could tell is this this bit see how it's higher up something's weird see how that's not lining up with that one it's up too high so I'm gonna push it down a smidgen and I'm pressing on the back with my fingers and then I'm going to just crease it. Then I know it's going to be even. Even Steven. See? Look. How cool. And it's going to be like pop-up. 3D. All right. Slide that over. Two and a quarter. Bah. Two and a quarter. So let's bring in our awesome otters. Um, I am going to use my little guy with the fish because that's how I'm going to pull in my granny apple green cardstock is I'm going to make his fish granny apple green. So every single coordinate. Ryan's gonna have his shower tomorrow morning. Be like, where's all the Q-tips gone? Be like, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen them. I don't know. Okay, maybe I do know, but I'm not telling. All right, let's get this guy in some water. Okay, super cute. Let's add a little bit of a sunrise behind him, shall we? Oh well. Add a little bit of that. Let's add a little bit of the bumblebee. 
a little bit of the red and I'm gonna work it in and make it kind of orangey let's add a little bit of the purple I'm just using the same tip because I don't mind if it all blends in and lastly the dark blue And I think I'm going to have to take some of that light blue and just kind of make this a little bit more pronounced. So cute. I tell you, there is a reason I've been stamping so many years and that I don't get tired of this hobby. It is so much fun. So much fun. Um, you know what guys, I'm going to add a little bit of this darker green to the water, just a bit. Uh, let's grab some Wink of Stella and add that to the fish and maybe a little bit to the water. All right, let's get this glued on. To glue this on, I'm going to open this up like that okay so I am lining it up with this with this line down here okay I'm just lining that up now I'm lining it up down here I'm gonna just poke that up a bit so when you close it all up it should just tuck right inside like that Okay, so now I'm going to put this onto my card. Okay, so to glue this, I'm just putting glue on these flaps. Now you can see how it's looking crooked up at the top. Well, watch. Look, I can kind of push it down with the glue and hold it down so that it's straight. Just hold it down there for a sec. I really recommend using the glue for this because it's so forgiving. You can really play around with it. And I mean, you could run the front of this card through an embossing folder too to add texture. You can do a lot. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use another piece of this designer series paper from the from the same set I'm gonna use this color which you know what kind of pulls in the color up here look right that wasn't even planned because I didn't know I was gonna do that little sunset just a reminder the tutorial with the measurements and supply list and everything is available to all of you for free because I love ya um, the link for that is in the description below Here's my finished card so again you can kick this up a notch by you know matting this I mean seriously imagine the possibilities with this really cool fold so let me show you the original again different pattern different image from the same stamp set there it is with just the two large rhinestones but come on how cute is that how cute I love them I hope you do too Thank you so much for watching this month's class. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed uh, creating and designing this class for you. Don't forget the link for the PDF tutorial is completely free and it's in the description down below for you. And please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and the little bell next to it so you're notified every time I upload a new video. It is truly my pleasure to make these videos for you and I hope that you have found lots of inspiration and fun ideas. Um, with these cards and use them with the stamps that you have at home and just enjoy and have fun. Take care. I appreciate you. Happy stamping.